Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And today's car is the Jaguar XJ Coupe V12 manual. Now this car I bought in 2014 and I've done a couple of videos on this car and they've proved hugely popular. It just seems this car is a bit of a hit in the garage. And today is the day it goes off for a proper makeover again at XJ Restorations. Now XJ Restorations have a separate paint division within there. Um, they're doing more and more painting of cars, actually. When I went and had the mechanical work done on this, you might remember, I think it was 2017, they did the suspension on it and transformed the way it handled, put a shorter dip in it, and just enhanced its V12 manual craziness. This engine revs like crazy. People don't realize how different the V12 Jaguar engine is the six cylinder engine. The six cylinder was a long stroke engine. V12 had a sort of racing sort of parentage and short stroke and feeds on revs. And this is one of the most surprising cars to uh, actually drive in the garage. Everyone loves it. My son is a particular fan on it, but it's a bit scabby. So it's going off for a color change and a body restoration and probably a few bits more. If you have a look here, you'll see the problem with this car. It looks great from a distance. And then you get up close and you see just around the windscreen, you can see it all sort of bubbling up along here. It's not very pretty. There's not much of this um, wheel arch left, a few other bits. So what's gonna happen today is this car is about to go on a transporter that's waiting outside. I was going to take it down on my own truck and then I got a sticky caliper when I loaded it last night. So someone else very kindly stepped in, take it down to see Keith Parrington who's waiting for this car's arrival. And the next time you'll join us, we'll be at his place and we'll go around and discuss what we're actually going to do. has arrived and uh, just backed it in looks quite shiny and I, I basically want to explain what's going to happen today we're all covid friendly we've got masks on and right now what we're going to do is just going to lift it up i'm going to introduce keith who's going to do the work on this car and then we're going to have a look around and just see how bad the bodywork is on this car keith you want to come in Certainly. thank you thanks ever so much great to be down here again good to see you again how many years is it? I think it's four years, four years isn't years. it, since we were last here. And uh, it's come back. Oh, we've had a hoop with this thing. It always surprises people. People just do not think it does what it does. And just the, the sound, you put those, you know, trick, well, you just replaced the pipe, didn't you? Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing too trick about no. it, but it, it transforms it. Yeah, it really did. And the suspension set up and lowered. And, you know, I, well, I can't see it it's on there, but it's, you know, it's a lot stiffer than it was. But it's not uber stiff, it still dries like a jacket. No, you've got a fine balance there, you've still got a bit of comfort. Yeah. You know, if it's too much, you can knock it down a step. No, it was, it was ace. But, as you know, I've never quite been happy yes. about the colour on this car. And I think I'm slightly in the minority, because people like this colour, don't they? It is it's very period. Squadron Blue was, the, was one of the colours on, on offer in the 70s. And yeah. Very popular with the saloon as well. I know. But we're not in the 70s anymore. If I was chasing originality, yeah. fine. I'm not chasing originality of this. This is just a surprise factor, a giggle, and uh, I just want it to look, a, you know, you wouldn't pay to Lamborghini Espada in this color. It's a sort of Jaguar color. Um, what color we're gonna go to is still up for debate. Uh, I think it's gonna go a sort of uh, dark green. I've got the Jaguar Project 7. I thought, well, that might suit it. And then I'll look at my Project 8 and it's purple. And then I'll look at my Lamborghini Espada and it's a sort of orangey red. And I think, oh, maybe I should do a more ex exciting colour. So, to be continued, that one. But, uh, yeah. Whatever colour you do it, 
yeah. it's going to be closed afterwards. Because yeah. since we've done this and you've put the video <laughs> out there, yeah. We 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 are building Harry Metcalf Cooper. Oh no! So oh dear! Be careful with your colour choice. Yeah. Oh right. <laughs> well, it won't be pink or anything like that. Don't hurry. So um, I'll tell you what you do. I'm going to go behind the camera, and then we'll just have a look. And if you want to lift it yeah, up in the air, to, and just see how bad this is, and how yeah. much work it's going to be. No problem. Yeah, do you think they're new? These wings. They, they they can't. They wouldn't normally last this long, would they? They wouldn't. And when you look at the condition of the rest of the car, you know. We yeah. know, having had it in before, that it's had work done to it. Right. You can tell straight away it's got no vinyl roof. So it's yes, been painted. it's a bit of a giveaway. It's yes. been painted, yeah. So the good chance it's had wings at some point. Yeah. Um, up until quite recently, they were still available new from Jaguar. Oh, really? Um, I say oh. quite recently, within the sort of past 10 years or so, they're, they're, they've gone now. Oh, no. Um, they, they appear. Right. But not manufactured by Jaguar anymore. No. I'm surprised. No. Because they must would do a roaring trade. They're always rusty on here, aren't they? Up. Up yeah, on top of the they, lights, they all please. go across the top, across the bottom, and across his mounting panel here right. as well. So, whoa, yeah. there's one good bit. Moving down the car, then uh, it doesn't. It's not quite so good. Yes, Again, bottom of the door. Again, it's not too bad. You know, it, yeah, it's obviously bubble, it's blistering up. Yeah. Um, but coupe doors, the coupe, they never managed to get the water sealing very good. No. So all along here, you'd find that these yeah. panels were just filled with water. So yeah. Any corrosion along the lower part of the skin here is, is to be expected. It's not a car to leave outside for long periods, is no. it, uh, Jack Coop? No, not at all. <laughs> not uh, at all. And then I'm hoping there's still some metal at this back section. I'm not quite sure how much is metal here. Well, this here is the most common area because, it, again, as we just said, with a, with a quarter panel filling with water, yeah. you've got a drain down the bottom here, which is, is it there? invariably that's blocked. Right. Um, there's, a, wanna... there's a channel that comes inside this sill panel here. Right. With a drain hole coming through there, so that any water that comes into the top of the quarter panel can get out. Right. Um, they tend to be blocked up, or people will be a bit excessive with wax oiling and block up the channels oh, right. that way. So, so one way or another, that tends to sit yeah. with water here. Yeah. And you can see with this one that the sill panel and the quarter panel are two separate panels. Yes. And there should be a definite join along here. And you can see the faint outline. There was once, but there's a lot of other stuff. I yeah. imagine that it's had filler work and repair work over yeah. here in the past. Yeah. Um, and the line's just gone. So oh not dear. uncommon. It's it's a coupe hotspot. Yeah. Um, okay. Which yeah. takes in, of course, the wheel arch as well. Um, right. That is all very ugly. Now, now you see why I don't often show this car, and you know it's never been really seen this close. Look at that. That's not nice, is it? Oh, imagine buying a car that looks like that. What was I thinking? Well, it should have a coach line, shouldn't it? Oh, optional. Oh, was it? Optional. They never came from the factory with or without. It depended on what the customer, oh, the order sheet. Oh, who was in time. that day? Oh, oh, it was an um, option. Go on. It was, and the Daimler variant had a chrome strip as well that was available. Right. The full length of the car as well. Oh. Moving around the back, rear valance, again a very common corrosion area, but it, it's good. It's, what it's obviously that? had one. It must before. have had one, mustn't it? Yeah. Because that's the, the that, that's new as well, isn't it? Sorry, that yeah. uh, that covering the tank, isn't it? There's well, twin these, tanks yeah. in these things. These are both removable. Um, right. with the fuel tanks behind there. And again, because of where they sit with the road wheels just here throwing everything up at yeah. it, they tend to be corroded. But the back balance would appear to be the original one. That's bizarre. There's no join across here. That is um, bizarre. And it's all in good shape. Good. I ought to just point out while we're down here, look at my suspension. <laughs> yeah, super shiny. This is all fantastic under here. This is not uh, nearly as scabby as up above. If I carry on around there, look at those even when the last last time you see brakes like that on a on a Jaguar. It looks spectacular. It all works beautifully. Anyway, yeah, that's a good bit. Use. Yeah, yeah, well, frequent, yeah, infrequent, but energetic okay. use when, oh, I'll tell you what there is on here. I don't know if we can see. It's all a bit tin wormy around. Okay, yeah. Around there. Again, quite common because this is where the valance joins the inner panel work. Right. Um, and as you can see, it's got a rubber sitting across there. So any right. water that comes down is trapped by the rubber that's between the two traps. flanges. Oh, I see. Corrosion will follow. So. Okay. Again, nothing too unusual or surprising. It, with, with, that, it, with an edge. Uh, very common to see all of this corroded along the bottom here. Um, because that's the cavity, so any moisture 
these boots are quite known for being damp and getting right. moisture in there, so it all settles in the bottom of the panel. And it's commonly corrosion right. on the bottom there as well. There will be quite a lot of it hot exhaust in that area, yes. drying it out when each time oh, it gets yes. home. Uh, same story here. It did have mud flaps here, didn't it? So it, this car did have mud flaps. I didn't take them off, but that might be a reason why I've got rear valance. I don't know. They always tend to scrape. Uh, so with, with your part one video, yeah, you see how wallowy the car was. Yeah, mud flaps would always be grounding out. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> so again, it's People not uncommon to see the remains of mud flaps <laughs> right. where they the said, rest is off down the road. I had enough of this. Yeah, and then this is not very pretty at all here. This side is first glance is probably worse than the other side um, the drain hole is still there right. you can still see that oh, good where's that just up in here right okay um, but you can see here that the return of the sill is is, is broken away and missing yeah so yeah, you've been it's, kind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's probably very similar to the other side it's just yeah. this side now looks worse because that's actually come away right um, what we do with these is a quarter panel, if you can find one now, you'll, uh, you'll pay two, three thousand pounds for really? a quarter panel. Shit. They've yeah, not been available for years. God. Um, I suppose it's unique to Coupe it though, is isn't it? It is unique to a Coupe, yeah. yeah. And when but, you look at it in situ, it doesn't look too big, but when you get the panel off, it's a monster of a panel. Oh, I see. Oh, quarter panel, you're saying from here, here all the way to the all door. All the way back, and the factory panel will come up to here. There's wow. a joint across here, so that will come in here. Right. Um, and then it also takes care of the fuel filler neck as well. So it, it's a fairly comprehensive right. Um Reproduction panels, again, are available. Yeah. We tend not to use them because you can still get the original four door rear wing repair sections, which are off the original pressing. So the arch then is the same? Uh, the arch is exactly the same. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. It, it cuts short here to allow for the door. Yeah. Um, and what we find is the advantage of using that panel is you've got the original wheel arch shape. Right. You'll find with quite a lot of coupes especially, the wings become quite bulbous. Because um, of reproduction panels, right. the quality's hit and miss. And if you're trying to stitch in a piece along here as well, you're going to get distortion. Yeah. So what we find is the repair section, although you've got the door cut away, yeah. it also comes up above the swage line here. Right. So by that allows you to keep this wheel arch section okay. looking like it should do and then we can fabricate and roll up a new forward section here. Yeah, thank god that's not a very complicated panel is it really? Those things it's go, not. It's not. he says, I don't know how he's doing right. it. And then the sill, well the funny thing we have, I don't know, it's all got sills isn't it? It's got that seam at the bottom here, it's it quite has, tight. You know, as we know from the work before, the car is structurally in really good shape. The cosmetics are letting it down. Yeah. So we know before we start that although it was four years ago, we know how you look after the car. Structurally, it's all sound. Yeah. We don't really have any concerns with it there. That said, obviously the sill does become structural. In the yeah. Back corner oh, it'll come out. There. Yeah. So yeah, it'll come out, and obviously the door is going to come off the bottom skim yeah. of the door, isn't it? Yeah. To be done. Again, obsolete now. You can't get doors. You can't yeah. get skins. Um, so what we do generally. As, as you commented at the back, there's nothing overly complicated about this yeah. section. We roll a new lower door yeah. up, repair the inner. Okay. Excellent. This wing just started to oh. move here. But again, a nice little localised repair in there, cut out all the corrosion. Right. And then another quarter. No, it is a f one it's piece, one isn't piece it? With these bolt on underriders. Oh, okay. Is this some funny panel here? Yeah, no. That's a bolt on valance panel here, which is going to be a new panel at some point. Um, right. It's black for starters, but it's also not corroded. And right. again, because of where it sits, yeah. um, this fills up with leaves, debris, oh, okay. water, um, and corrodes all the way along the bottom here. But um, as you say, it should be body colour, shouldn't it? It should be one? body colour. I, I looked at debumper in it, and I thought, oh, you know, like you're saying, there's a hinge point here, isn't there? Yeah, the you can't. You've always got this hinge extruding outside of the bodywork. Yeah. So whilst taking the bumpers off gives a nice sleek look. Yeah. You think got these big. Right. It's not quite right. Hinges. Like the idea of that. Um, that grill, extra grill. V12 have that, or did everything have that? All Series Twos have this grill. Oh, okay. Here. So it doesn't differentiate. The only yeah. bit that says V12 is that exactly. important bit there. Well. Yeah. That's all you have. Common, common corrosion areas on these cars. The bottom of the windscreen rubber. They're not 
bonded. So right. series ones and twos are uh, standard rubber. Very common to get corrosion all along here and on this corner here. Oh. It would the paint work off here. I can't imagine there's too much going on. You see the line, there's a small line just here. Oh, Again, yeah. very common with coupes. Yeah. Because you've got oh, the structure. Right. Um, so all the stress in front of the car on the roof comes up through this bit here. Right. Compared to the thick pillar at the back. Right. So that won't move, but up here can. So right. quite common to see a little stress fracture there. Again, with the paint off, we take care of anything that's going on there. Never the prettiest of engines, to say the least. They're not. No. Look at There's that. only so much you can do. But without the compressor there, yes. the air conditioning, it does... At least you can see it's a V. Well, and you can change the front spark plugs as well. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, that's true. And any relay you fancy you coming to look at, <laughs> there, there they all are, all laid out. But uh, yeah, a solid bonnet. I mean, a remarkably yeah. not a, anything as far as I can see. No, really good. They do, they, they fracture along the bottom here because obviously it's a big lengthy panel hinging off. So right. they, they fracture along the hinge line here. Wow. Uh, and also these two spring-loaded pins which locate and latch the bonnet. Yeah. Obviously with, with the force, right. you tend to find those are either cramped or bent. Oh, right. But it's all good news here. That's a funny one. I don't know if that's a, okay. what that was. We can certainly, uh, do a better patch. Make a prettier repair of that one. You're actually working on another coupe at the moment, aren't you? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we've got another coupe in at the minute which came to us to have your conversion done. So it had our suspension kit on it. It's this one. It now has our suspension kit, it's converted to a manual. Whoa. Again, it is a V12 car. Right. Um, it came in as a Primrose Yellow factory V12 car. Primrose Yellow, wow. Primrose Yellow, very rare, very rare colour. So it, it came in for mechanical work, right. with a view to maybe one day doing the bodywork. And as we put it onto a two-poster lift to begin the mechanical work, oh, yes. um, the body kind of folded around the lift. No, so your it, worst it, nightmare. Uh, oh, certainly for the customer, the heart goes out when that happens. Because even if you're planning it long term to do the bodywork, to yeah. have an unexpected need to do it sooner rather than later yeah. is not pleasant. But he, yeah, he has done the manual conversion, this yeah, gentleman. Yeah. Fantastic. After watching a video on a, one of these. Absolutely. Rocky Ray. Well, he's gonna, I can tell him he's going to really enjoy it when it's back. But uh, that's a lovely colour. That's not a standard colour either, is it? Not that's a standard colour. This is Jaguar Indigo Blue. So oh, so it is a Jaguar colour. to 2020. Wow. Um, sadly, the light in here right now doesn't do it justice. But when the light catches it on the curves, it, it, it's just... It is look, uber pit, yeah, fabulous. Well, there you go. She's all yours now. Right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, where do you start doing a job like this? What? What's first steps? First steps would be we'd get bumpers, lights, all the bright work off the car. Yeah. Um, we'd then take all the removable panels off, so wings, bonnet. Oh, these would come off. Boot yeah. the door. Uh, yeah which then reduces this big car down to quite a small car. We've got a roof right. and two quarter panels pretty much. Yeah. Um, what we'll then do is we would send the panels off to a friend of ours, Joe, just like new blasting, takes all the paint off the panels. Okay. he will probably have the panels about a week. In the meantime, we would mechanically take all the paint off the body shell. Right. Uh, we don't like using acids or... or, or it's interesting. Or yeah, because someone else, well, on the Lancia pool that I'm doing at the moment, they said, no, we don't acid strip it. it it's just too aggressive as there. Uh, it, it, it is, and you can only go by your own experiences. And I've done two before. Uh, customer requested acid dipping and yeah. never felt happy with the final product. Yeah. Uh, as neutralised as they try to be, yeah. you're going to have acid sitting in the seam somewhere. That's um, exactly what, yeah. And on one of the, one of the cars, so. it was a Mark II actually, we had issues with the bottoms of the doors. Right. Six months after the car was finished, oh, it's oh, and you, you frustrating. So, the guy we use knows his stuff and yeah. knows what media to use. And the body shells come back absolutely bare, no damage, Gosh. superb. So, so it's just graft. Really. It's just graft, absolutely. Yeah. And it's how many hours you're going to put into it is what determines it. They really it? do consume hours. Yeah. Um, they they're, they're a complex body shell, and yeah. the advice when buying one would always be buy the best body you can. Because mechanically, right. the Series 1, 2 and 3 XJs are all the same. Um, this shares a lot of components with an E-Type. So mechanically, these aren't too much of a headache. Right. Body, it, it's 1970s British Labour. Right. They, they dissolve. 
Yeah. And, you know, well, availability's not great. No. So. I was just going to say, I've got Lancashire 1972, <laughs> that, that dissolves, I think, okay. even quicker than okay. this. Yeah. But um, there's, there's less metal in one of those. Maybe, maybe rethink your uh, carbine. <laughs> yes, I need to. Um, so what, obviously, depending on what colour you go, we, we need yeah. to decide what we do under here. Yeah. Oh, what, with the, yeah, the engine out? Yeah. You chucked a figure at me for removing the engine, wasn't it? It is, it adds. To do that, it adds about 3,000 to the cost of the job. About 3,000, because right. As we saw earlier, there's a lot under there to take out, and it's all got to come out. Yeah. Um, it's all got to go back in again. Right, there's and an awful lot of it. Once it's out, the engine bay is probably the most intricate part of panel work on the car to uh, paint. There's lots of nooks and crannies. Uh, um, you've got 45 years of brake fluid, battery acid, engine oil, all leading into the metal work. So it's got to be cleaned properly, it's got to be treated properly and then, uh, and then painted. I just think there's some, there are some oil leaks and things on the engine. I, I just. It seems pointless to me having this wonderful shiny body and then, no, you can't look under there, no, you can't look. Um, I've got to have it so it's presentable. This car will be at events, you know yeah, it will. Yeah. And uh, I want to be proud of it, so I think you might be doing removing that. So you would do that early on, I guess, would we, you? We would do that early on. Um, what we'd look to do is almost make that the priority because the external body work, we know what we're dealing with. Right. If we're taking the engine out, you want to yeah. get that out, everything stripped, cleaned, painted right. and back in again. So we'd paint the engine bay first. Oh, uh, right. And then put okay. the engine back in and then deal with, with the rest of it. And, and I, so I'm going to be 15 to 20,000, am I, for this? 15 to 20, you're probably going to come right in the middle of that. Right. Um, okay. It, Gosh. The, the car is quite honest. We can yeah. see where the issues are. Yeah, and um, we've owned it for a while now, yeah. isn't it? It's not yeah. as though it's brand new to me. Uh, I think it's worth putting that sort of amount in it. I, the one thing I want to do, I want to change the dash. I want to do a different kind of dash in there. I want to get rid of my tinny roof. And I'd quite like the doors to shut a bit nicer as well. Two of those three we can deal with. Uh, right, oh, it's the doors. The doors. Yeah. Um, the doors are a little bit of a problem with these cars because of the size, the weight, right. and the seam. And you've got a door that's twice the size of a four door with heavy pillarless window mechanisms right. and Jaguar utilised four door door hinges. Okay. So you've got all that additional weight oh, so that, that on a four door door hinge. So there we go. So yeah, what sort of time period is so? Um, providing there are no hiccups along the way, we're looking about three months. Really. Three to four months. Yeah. Oh, that's a look as shiny as that Absolutely. Wow. Well, there we go. Well, thanks, Keith. It's, um, Thank I've, you. I've coped. Yeah, that's been good. We haven't found any more horror stories in there. And, um, well, I hope you've enjoyed that as well. Just a look at what we're going to be doing with this car over the coming months. You'll be joining us as well. So if you have enjoyed this video, well, please keep watching. Keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.